This is not just the place where the world's best tech gets unveiled. It's where visionary ideas come to life. Because it's not enough to create amazing things. You have to create things that make a meaningful difference with people. Real people. Because they're the ones who decide what's worth talking about. What's ready for reality. It's tech that allows us to connect. And explore. And play. In ways we can see. And ways we haven't begun to imagine. And here, right now, is where we'll discover the ideas that will change our lives for the better. Are you ready? Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Executive Vice President of CES at the Consumer Technology Association, Karen Chupka. Well, good afternoon, everyone. CES is the global stage for innovation, and it's uh, one area where we're seeing that transformation is playing out. One, one way, ah, sorry about this. <laughs> one area that we're seeing transformation play out is in the entertainment and media industry. As new technologies disrupt the way we, use, we seek out and consume entertainment, content creators, distributors, marketers, and everyone must change with this change. With more and more options appearing every day, how do you map your plan forward? Well, we're thrilled today to welcome NBC Universal, one of the world's leading meeting companies, to the stage to tell you just how they're planning to do that with an incredible group of multi-talented individuals. So let's start things off with a video. I'm pleased to welcome to the stage Linda Yaccarino, Chairman of Advertising and Partnerships with NBC Universal, and Natalie Morales, West Coast anchor today and host of Dateline. Please welcome them to the stage. Hello, everybody. How exciting to be here. Linda, I think they should have flown us in on one of those drone helicopter thingies. I, that would seem that, completely terrifying. Do you think that would fly through the FAA <laughs> airspace regulations? I don't think we'd get through the security checkpoint. Uh, last time on this stage, guys, I mean, it's been a while, but remember Bradley and yeah. Gaga, that performance? That was right here. They're on their way, right? They're, on, they're coming right now. Okay. No. We've got incredible talent here for you today. We've got a great conversation. Um, you saw the sizzle reel that we had, which is, I think it speaks to the power of this company and the content, the endless hours, hundreds of thousands of hours of content that is being created just in the year 2020 alone. So let me lead off with that, Linda. Walk me through with all the different forms of entertainment that we have out there. What does the future look like in the evolution of NBCU? Well, hopefully uh, the, the video communicated a little bit or a little peek into the depth and breadth of everything that NBC Universal does. But to the point of your question, if we rewound 
when NBC started out as just a radio company a hundred years ago, we put on a couple of hours of content. We broadcast a couple of hours of content every single day. Now, fast forward to today and what we're here talking about all week at CES and certainly during this hour is the amount of content that we publish and produce every single day and the diversity and the scale at which we're able to reach the people of the United States every day. And to, again, to another point, in 2020 alone, NBC Universal will push out over 110,000 hours wow. of premium content. Wow. To break that down to see what it really means, if you were gonna watch our content, which I hope you do 24 hours a day, it would take you 12 years. Oh and I just bring up that stat to put into context the reach of NBC Universal to actually get beyond that screen and touch consumers every single day. And that's really what we're here all week and certainly today to talk about. It's the diversity, it's the quality of that content because we know today the consumer is in the driver's seat again all about you you and that audience we yeah. know that you've been liberated you've been free of that big screen in your home we want you to watch it there but if not there's that screen in your lap and there's the screen in your hand and you can find our content there also and how many of all of you i know if you're like me you're watching three things at once yeah. You're watching the big screen, the little awesome. screen, and the iPad screen, and then you're also looking over your kids' screens and watching what they're watching. So given all of this content that you're creating, I mean, 110,000 hours of new content, we're not talking the library or the movies. No, it's um, all new. What does that mean for the future of entertainment? I, I think it's, it actually paints a very exciting picture of the future of entertainment. Mm -hmm because our audiences, when you think about it, we connect with them in such a deep, personal way. If, if you're like myself, uh, and you really look forward to your weekly date with your best friends, the Pearsons, you sit down. <laughs> it might be Tuesday nights at nine o'clock, but I sit down, pour that glass of wine, and I look forward to a visit from my friends. Or when I wake up Sunday morning, sometimes I wasn't able to catch the live broadcast of SNL, but I want to see that opening monologue. So what it really means about the future of entertainment is that it comes to you in many forms. It comes to you in many different lengths of time mm -hmm. because it comes to you the way you want it. So the choice is unlimited for our audiences, and we know we need to make that content available to you yeah. in every way that you want to interact with our content. So of course, technology plays a huge role into this, but also the partnerships that NBCU creates as well. Yeah, and it's partnerships and really what we're here all week long at CES talking about, because when we're able to aggregate all those audiences on any screen, long form, mm -hmm. short form, any time of day, when we're able to aggregate all of those audiences and mobilize that advertising opportunities for our partners, that's a big deal because if they put their messages with our content and inspires emotion, inspires action, and quite frankly, like many of you, we remember that and we go out and buy stuff. So that's really an important opportunity for us because, for example, if you wake up every morning and it's a it's a, you know, cultural thing. It's a habit that you watch the Today Show yes, every morning. You. You're no stranger <laughs> to that. But if you miss it, you can listen to the Willie Guys yes. podcast. You're probably reading one of Hoda's books or you're taking <laughs> Hoda and Jenna's recommendations of their favorite things of what to buy. So there's a relationship that goes way beyond just the content that we're pushing out or the broadcast nature well, of our I, brands. And I think I know, speaking from the news perspective, and we'll get into this a little bit, like how much our world is changing, but yet I think that's one thing that doesn't really change is that connection. And, and you do have to forge that. You've got to reach through that screen in some way and grab them. And so that connection is everything. And sometimes by making the device even smaller, 
you feel maybe a little more connected, you know? It's, it's in my hands now. I, I agree, and I think yeah. specifically to your point, the future is all about personalization. So when we can get that content that you really care about and give you the opportunity to reach beyond that screen, to form that personal relationship, mm -hmm. and in many cases, put the right ad next to that content, that's when the magic happens. Yeah. And that's what CES is all about. And that's the intersection of technology and content. And that's really what fuels all the innovation at NBC Universal. So I talked about, you know, a hundred years ago with a couple of hours of content every night through the radio. But whether you're talking today, it's listening via podcast. It's watching it on that short form of your phone. And that's what's so exciting because it's almost unlimited choice on your terms, on the consumer's terms. What I like for me is it means we have many jobs and many potential jobs, which is a good thing. Um, speaking to the power of the talent and the diversity that we have at NBCU, I want to bring out one of our very favorites, Mandy Moore, because I too have a date with her every Tuesday night in my home in the Pearsons. Mandy Moore, the star of This Is Us. Come on out, lady. Oh. Hello, hi, 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 hi. It's a big stage. It's a long walk. <laughs> it's a long walk out here, guys. It is. Hi. Uh, Hello. Hi. Hi. We're hi. so excited about all that Mandy brings to the table because not only are you an incredible star for one of our hit shows, This Is Us, but you're also back to music again. you got a new album yeah. coming out soon with your husband uh, in this yeah. year, which we're, aren't we all excited yes. about that? We Thank missed you. Mandy singing. <laughs> Thank you. But what I think is so great is that, you know, you've had this opportunity to relaunch yourself and relaunch your sure. career and then now going back to your roots. And I think that speaks to what NBCU has allowed opportunities for so many people like you with so many great talents. It's pretty powerful. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is my 20th year in the industry. I signed a record deal when I was 15, so it's like thinking about how the landscape has changed so much in the last 20 years, it's pretty mind-boggling. I mean, obviously, it's like storytelling yeah. is always going to be king, and the people you choose to partner with and work with, that's going to be of the utmost importance. Right. And technology can't really replace owning your skill set. Like, that is what it is. But beyond that, everything has changed. The way you connect with people with the advent of social media, what you guys have been talking about so far, there's so much content that's been created. There's so many ways to view that content. Um, but also, I think the, the barriers, the limitations that have been put on people to be content creators have, have all but been erased in a sense. We all in our pockets have, you know, iPhones with better cameras than most professionals had for decades. And you can make a record on your laptop in your bedroom. So yeah. it's, in that sense, it's, there's, the, the world has opened up exponentially and there's so many more opportunities for people to find a platform and to get their art out there. I'm thinking about all the people who have, you know, been discovered on mediums like YouTube, yes. singing and all of that. How much that has changed the game. And we're going to have Esther Dean from Songland coming on in a little yes. bit as well. She could talk about that too. But for you, with new music coming out, and everything as well. The ability to kind of tap into your This Is Us audience, sure. but then also, you know, relaunch your music career. That has to be pretty incredible to have such a huge platform. To have the platform of this, this television show that I think sort of awakened people that might have not been familiar that that was sort of my <laughs> initial entree into the industry. I've met plenty of people who are like, oh, I had no idea you did music. And so, I have Dan Fogelman to, uh, to thank yeah. for writing in the sort of musical backstory for my character because it, it sort of, um, you, you know, broadened my audience for sure, but also it kind of ignited something in me and, yeah. and helped sort of get that fire going again and get me back into the studio. What hasn't changed about our industry, do you think? What hasn't changed? I mean, some of those things that I mentioned, like it really is always going to come down to... Um, to storytelling and the narrative. And, and I feel... Characters and that characters, sure. absolutely. It's like, I think about 
wanting to move somebody, whether they're watching the yeah. content on a five-inch screen or on a big screen TV at home. Like, I want to develop nuanced characters that whether someone's binge watching it or watching yeah. it week by week, that they're still just as invested. And I think I, I about think, what this, this Is Us has done in terms of breaking barriers. I mean, yeah, there's in I terms think of content. When, um, Mandy's being very modest, so thank you for everything that you do on This Is Us because oh the, the cultural impact of This yes. Is Us and the change that happened in this country, you know, at NBC Universal, we often talk about This Is Us being the show that none of us in this country realized we really needed. Mm -hmm. And what it really did was break down the barriers so that we all have challenges in our families, yes. Yes. and we all have differences in diversity in the family, but when the common through line is that yeah. we love each other and we're here to support each other, good and bad, yes. hard times, that's what brings us all together, and that was really what awakened so many of us, certainly at our company, but, but the pride that we have to bring that to our viewers every week, and we talk about it, and now we just say that we have our best friends, our date with our best friends and Pearsons <laughs> every week. I can't underscore the value of that impact, and I'm happy that it has awakened or educated an army of fans to support you in your music career, yeah. but, but I really think it's important that when you have a platform like we have, yeah. and, and you put the storytelling first, it makes a difference. Yes, it does. absolutely. And how is NBCU then supporting and innovating based on the direction that you got from This Is Us and from fans who love the show? Yeah, we learned so many things and it's actually, we talk about uh, the beauty of This Is Us is actually in its simplicity and that we see ourselves in it. But when you talk about how technology really had to fuel the scaling of this show mm. because as choice has escalated and people have so many opportunities to watch so many other things, we needed to make sure that uh, we brought This Is Us to the audiences. And I remember when we uh, first debuted the promo for This Is Us, because we kind of had a hunch we had a super hit on our hands, but you're never really sure. Mm -hmm. So we launched the first promo or the trailer for This Is Us exactly like our sister movie studio would launch a trailer for the movie. And then it just, just caught on fire and went from there. So that's what was so exciting. All right. Well, what I also love about working at a company like NBCU is the diversity and the multiple platforms. And speaking of that, we've got with us from Telemundo, the star of La Reina del Sur, Kate Del Castillo. Lady Hi, ladies. Red. How are <laughs> you? She's stunning. I, I, um, I am just amazed with all that you've been doing as well. I mean, the two of you are just nonstop workaholics. <laughs> you not only have let any of the see all the ladies on this exactly. Stage. Working. Yeah. We're working it. Yes. Yeah. Um, you had a, a one woman broad off Broadway show last year. Yes. You, uh, which and then you say it and I start sweating. Yes. <laughs> oh my God, that was a, the biggest challenge in my career for sure. It, it was a, you know, for me the cross over, you know, that word is so big. But for me, it's amazing to do it in your own language or with your own stories, and that's what happened. And uh, the way she spoke, it was a monologue, and there were like monologues. Within the monologue, I interpreted uh, like 14 yeah. different characters. Everything in English is the first time that I do. I've done a lot, many plays, but it was the first time that I do it in English, all of it. But talking about feminicide in my country, so yeah. it was very intense. But it was, it, it, it's, it, I, I, you know what? I I sweated so so badly. I wanted to disappear. <laughs> I was like, why did I say yes? Why do we actors? have to put ourselves through those kind of things. But then it was amazing. I wish it was only six weeks, but it was the best. It does. It kind of revives you, right? Everybody, yes, all, all actors talk about how theater oh, yeah. brings it kind of all back to you. And you get that immediate feedback, which I think is, again, speaking to the power of having that connection. And with La Reina del Sur, you guys are, are was it 60 episodes a season? You're in your second season now. Yeah, well, right? it's funny because I can, can I cannot say it was the second episodes, season. Mandy. <laughs> <laughs> you would die, right? I, would die. <laughs> <laughs> I know 60 episodes is just a, it's crazy. But I don't know 
why I thought that this second season, after 10 years, yeah. um, it was going to be less episodes because everything is changing now as we're talking. Yeah. Everything has less, you know, uh, tension and, and to things that are that long. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think now it's selling amazingly. It, the second season went even better than the first one. Yeah. And the people still like it. And, and for me, it was like, why do we do a second season? It's based on a novel of this amazing author, a uh, Spaniard, Arturo Perez Reverte. So there was not a second book, a second novel. So why do it? Just leave it like that because it was a huge success, regardless of language, which was amazing. And um, so they decided to do it. Arturo Perez Reverte didn't write uh, another book, but he wrote the whole structure of the second one. And I said, okay, then if he's in, I'm in, you know? And, and this yeah. time it was, you can see both seasons. The first season, we had no money. And the second season, we have money. <laughs> you can see it in the quality of production and everything. It was just, it, it, you can see the difference. And Telemundo back then was a completely different uh, company, a yes. network, completely different. And, and, and I was going to say, the reason for that difference that you saw from season one to season two, because of the success of season one, Telemundo has now taken the leadership position over Univision, who was our main competition. And thanks to your show and the 60 episodes um, for fueling that success. So it's been a, a, a great honor and privilege to watch your success. And, and we're so, so grateful for everything that you've done because you've helped transform the network to the position it's in today. Hey, you know what, thank you, thank you for saying that. And it's, uh, it's just amazing to, to know it because then as actors, we just go do our job and then nobody tells you the, the yeah. real thing. And it's just, it feels really good, especially because being a woman, Latina, and it was the first, the first leading character talking about, you know, all this uh, narcos, right. which I'm not a fan of it, but it, what it makes it amazing is that it was the first leading lady that will be, uh, you know, doing something in a men's world, but still, because she's like anti-hero, actually. Yeah. <laughs> and and that, I think that's what they love, because she's is very, she's flawed, and, but still has a heart. And it, it, I think that's part of, you know, when it's, there's a good story, then... Yeah, and I think that's part of it, because you're still rooting for her, yeah. you're cheering yes. for her. Yes, and, and what I love about the success is that it's not just on Telemundo, though, because people come up to you from all over, all over the world and say, oh, I know you from, right? Yes, yeah, no, and, and it, what, what's amazing is that we, we, we like, literally, the, the ratings were, like, on top of that uh, time, spot of time. It was, yes. like, I don't know if it was 9 or 10 back then. And so regardless of language, we were number one for three months, which are 60 yeah. episodes, <laughs> more or less. And so that was crazy because even the American... Uh, television, yeah. and we were number one, and this time again, number one, and now it's in Netflix, and so it's like crazy. So that's why I'm, I'm sort of surprised, you know, like, because we would never com compete with the American audience, and now it's a complete different uh, scenario yeah. everywhere, and it's the time for women, and it's the time for Latinos, Absolutely. so yes. I could, it couldn't be well, better for me. And, and I think that speaks to, again, the reach, Linda, with and what we've learned from that is you think, okay, this is going to be only for a Spanish-speaking audience, but that's not the case because multiple households like my own were speaking Spanish, Portuguese, English, and so, or you want your children to understand or have an ear for Spanish. I know that I put things on in Spanish at my house just so that my children are, you know, constantly getting it yeah, from all it's, sides. It's one of the things that drives the innovation at our company because we want to embrace that diversity and actually deliver, whether it's the um, Spanish-dominant households or the bilingual households, mm -hmm. we know that they crave content, mm -hmm. whether it's in Spanish language only or there's a combination of English and Spanish. So we deliver that to them. And I think a lot of companies try to, um, well, not necessarily fight it, but they're not embracing that to fuel the innovation. But it's one of the things that's driving the success at the company. It's certainly a lesson. And as I think, you can see, yeah. when, when you're able to sit and look to the left or the right and have talent of this caliber, it makes it a whole heck of a lot easier. <laughs> well, let's, let's broaden out our talent a little bit more on this stage. Um, because We're not we, done yet. Not done yet. <laughs> we talked about Mandy's music career and here to talk about where the industry is going on the music side and technology is Esther Dean, the Songland producer mentor, who is just fabulous, inspiring me, Woo! inspiring so many young people. Hello! 
Hello, hello, hello. Hello, we bow down, we bow down. Oh, no. Um, you have, my gosh, this woman is on fire. She's produced Katy Perry's Firework, Nicki Minaj's Super Bass, Super ba Bass, not no, super, super Bass. Super Bass, no, it is Super Bass. Bass, bass like Bass. Yes. She understood uh, a little bit of it. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Well, you got my heart beating out of the way. Can't you feel that boom, ba -dum, boom, boom, ba -dum, boom, 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 You got that super Woo. bass. Anyway, yes. you guys can both uh, do a jam. Yes, session, right? we will. Yeah, right I will stalk now. her. I, I want to hear something right now yes. between the two of you. Um, on Songland, though, seeing how you're guiding contestants yes. and you're helping produce their music along with, you know, with Ryan and so many, there's so much incredible talent on this show. Uh, how, though, is this technology and shows like yours inspiring the next generation of musical artists? Well, technology is the streamline to the people who d didn't know about me. You know, so I go into the studio, use a lot of technology yeah. from Newman mics and speakers and, and computers at all times, you know, using every app I can, every rhyme zone app, every thesaurus, <laughs> yeah. you know, like I can't leave the house to go to work without my technology. So the thing that happened is Songland and the way that you get to put what we do on set, on, on TV, yeah. that's, we don't keep those, we, those are our secrets. So it's getting to show people who's like me that this exists, so it, it's coming, like showing, bringing a light to things. TV is like, I know it's turning on, but it's also turning on. You know, it's turning on people to see things that they would have never seen in any other way. And I think we're seeing, I mean, how music is being produced in such a different way now with what you're all, you're talking about, with all the technology that's out there. What are some of the things though that haven't changed? I mean, obviously we know a good tune when we yes. hear one, right? Well, what hasn't changed, but we, a song has to be great. Right? A song has to be great, but what has changed, and I love to talk about change, is that more people are being able to express what they know how to do to the public. You know, I'm an independent artist as, uh, when it comes down to music. So I have to do the graphic design for myself. So I use Baz Art. I use Canva. I use the Mac. I, sometimes when I'm making my album, getting something ready, I have a computer here, a phone here, all these ways to use technology just to let people know that I have something to say. You know, so at the end of the day, technology is giving um, everybody a way of doing things and knowing they could be me. You know, mm -hmm. I, I'm not a secret anymore. Uh, being a songwriter is not a secret anymore. And in and, and my life, I'm, I'm going to be able to have a legacy of financial for the rest of my life from the things that I did because I was in a room with technology. You know? That's incredible. How did you learn? I didn't learn. It was in me. So <laughs> <laughs> I learned she how to make money talented. from it. <laughs> so I'm naturally talented. I wasn't naturally talented at making money from it. So, uh, I had to learn that, you know, but you know what, like we use this thing Pro Tools and as a songwriter, I was just writing songs, but I had to start learning how to count the bars and the measures and, and, and the amps and the, and it was so crazy, but it turned into something magical to say, wow, all that I need is on this computer. All that I ever need, the microphone is loving me. I get to say whatever I want to say, and then I get to push a button and hear it back. And now with technology, I get to go on to Disco Kid, you know, and yeah. put my album in and put my lyrics in there. And then it streams into a streaming of people who's going to hear my songs without me asking the record label, please play my song. Right. Please don't drop me. Please give me money for the marketing of anything. And now I'm like, nope. I'm going to put my own money and I'm going to put it into this and I'm going to use social media to market. And so yeah. technology is everybody's way now. It makes the independent person more confident in their independence. Yeah, you know? so, it's incredible. I was thinking about that. like back in my day <laughs> <laughs> when I liked a song on the radio, I used to listen to it because I was living in Spain at the time growing up during high school years. And when I liked a song on the radio, it was Casey Kasem Top 40 on, you know, the Air Force Network. So I would, every Sunday, 
be ready to record the yeah, show. Yes, of course. And of course, and then it's like my instant edit. Okay, I don't like that song. Rewind, delete, delete. and then go back and record. <laughs> now you can put it on repeat. Now, now. And you can get it from the you know space. Yes. You know, it's, it's so incredible. Awesome. Yeah. You think about it, the mixtape nowadays. Very different than oh, our mixtape. It's the new mixtape. Technology has shown. And I remember, yeah. you remember when Napster showed up, yeah. and everybody yes. was so against music getting used. But music is the gift of the world. It is the most healing thing yeah. that you could do. So technology has taken music and taken every way that they stream and made a healing, an instant healing. Yeah. You know, when you look at This Is Us, instant healing. When you hear songs, tell them, it's instant healing. Yeah. And we needed that. So technology is the people who decided, no, you don't get to be stingy and just charge everybody medicine in a bottle. Mm -hmm. We're going to give it to them freely. And whatever they need to be healed in, they get yeah. to choose it, yeah. you know, in an um, emotional way. You know what I, what I love um, is on Songland is we've seen also great opportunities to create these valuable partnerships as well. I know that with Hobbs and Shaw coming out, that was a big deal, right? Yes. Talk about that, Linda. I, it's also, I think to Esther's point, is the unifying nature of music. Mm -hmm. It brings people together at their core in such an emotional way that there's passion there that you can't describe and there's no surrogate for that passion when you achieve it through music, right? Yeah. And when you talk about partnerships, the advertisers, there's not a lot of places that they have the opportunity to get to that core uh, of that passion, particularly in an environment or a context like Songland where it's undiscovered talent, where it's folks that are trying to get their break. And just the fact, like and if you watch some of the episodes or future episodes and they get into a room with you, you even, they, you underestimate the impact of you being in that room and that they're able to learn and experience that. And that inspiration, when you're able, when we're able to form those partnerships again, that's kind of where the magic happens. Yeah. It's, it's my whole thing when I went into Songland, because I knew that I was giving away my truth. I knew that I was going to sit on the stage and my mind was going to start ticking and it was going to do the things that I do in, in a dark room. You know, studios is a padded room for psychos, you know, <laughs> and we feel safe there. So uh, I knew that I was going to be sharing more than I would share, at, you know, at a younger age. I just wouldn't tell people how I tick. I wouldn't show people how I move, but when I got there, I said, as long as I can service the mirror image of myself, which is songwriters, mm -hmm. which I know how hard it is to get in a room with anybody. I know how hard it is for the song to be taken immediately, and I know how hard it is to you to get the credit, because the credit yeah. is always taken. So I was like, I would do my service by making sure before they leave me, they know that everything they need to know about taking it to the next step, and then, and everything they need to know about how to stand strong when somebody comes to them and say, hey, I know you did this whole song, but I'm going to take your whole name off and I'm going to take most of the percentage and I'm going to enjoy it and you're going to remember me. Yeah. <laughs> and you, so then I say, you know, we talked to everybody from the show of for season one. I still, I just talked to Abel Hart yesterday. Wow. It's not going anywhere because it wasn't for the show. It was for the service of people. You know, so yeah. and technology brings that, you know, to the forefront because other than that, I would go into every studio trying to meet new writers, telling them yeah. how to make it, you know? Like, it's amazing. Well, I love that you, I mean, you pour your heart and your soul <laughs> into helping create this talent, helping yeah. them be discovered. Um, speaking to that, we've got Terry Crews, of course, from America's Got Talent and Brooklyn Nine-Nine, who also has a similar role as host of America's Got Talent. Come on out, Terry. <laughs> The lone man. The lone man. But he's a very strong man who loves women and supports women. There we go. Come on, it's Terry Crews. I gotta do this. You know yeah. I do this. Okay. You know what's going on. You gotta pop the pecs. Okay, we can't do that, but you could do no, that. No, it's okay. I got it. <laughs> Terry, we talked about this connection, you know, being able to forge this connection, not just with viewers, but with the talent that you guys meet on America's Got Talent on Songland. But really, it is ultimately about that, you know, forging that bond with viewers, and they see how much there is in the give back, right? Wanting to 
to make sure that they know that we're here for the right reasons, right? You know, the yeah. thing, this, what, I, what I love about being the host of America's Got Talent is the stories. Stories, stories are the essence of life. This is what it's all about. Everyone here has a story. Every person, the whole top 10 on America's Got Talent could have their own movie. Yeah, that's true. And it's full of drama, it's full of comedy, it's full of tragedy, and it's full of redemption. And let me tell you something, you get connected. I, I, I say this all the time and I'll continue to say it. I would host AGT for free, simply because it, feels a need in me. Be careful. Be careful. (laughs) But I'm just telling you, it fulfills a need in me for that story, for me to recognize myself in every one of those acts and see, because I'm from Flint, Michigan. I'm from humble beginnings. I mean, when I look at Hollywood, I'm still amazed at where I'm at. I'm still amazed at, you know, being here and being amongst, you know, great people and superstars. But then I look at this thing and I go, wait a minute, there's something common. There's a common denominator here. And it's the story. It's the the, the overcoming the obstacle. And what's more important, what I think is the future of entertainment is now every American has a voice in that story with technology. The whole thing is when everybody, no matter what I do as a host, no matter what they do as judges, America has to vote. And they get a vote. And they get to say who wins, who goes on to the next level. And it's like now every American is now a part of that story. And it's a beautiful thing. Used to be, though, we would sit around the the big screen TV as a family and, and watch whatever was on that night. Now, of course, as we know, everybody has their device at their fingertips. I mean, my kids are watching YouTube in another room. My son is on his computer. That's how he watches he, his TV. I'm the only one watching on the big screen TV <laughs> all by myself with my pups in my lap. Um, do you worry at all, though, about that? And, and how do we keep that connection regardless well, I, of what device they're on? My thing is, mm-hmm. uh, you know, you got to look at back in the day. I mean, people were trying to stop kids from riding bikes. They're like, they're going to get too far away. You know what I mean? I mean, that's the old times. I mean, when people thought movie theaters were, I mean, TV was actually going to be a danger to movie theaters. I think that expanding it and opening it up only makes it better, but, but we have to know, uh, you know, what it is we want from our technology. You know what I mean? Uh, I can see it as a, a really, really positive thing in every respect, but then also you can look at it as a negative, but you have to have control, and we have more control than ever. I mean, I remember having to watch whatever was on yeah. when I was a kid. Right. But now you can pick and choose at any time what you want, when you want it, and you can restrict it. It's like there is a thing I usually, I mean, with my kids, I have five kids, and I literally limit it to an hour and a half a day. And I can do that. You know what I mean? There are apps to help you do it. Uh, and the fact that they can pick what they want to watch when they want to watch it it really helps because now they don't have to wait all day until it comes on right. and that kind of thing. But, yeah. but also, I think it's really important, particularly for the shows that you're on. Can I use you for a couple of examples, if you don't mind, sir? If you look at AGT, uh, one of the, the winner from one of the last seasons, Cody Lee, yes. an incredible story. Yes, there's a, there's a movie there. So he's a severely disabled young man. He's 22 years old. He was born blind, and shortly after he was born, or a couple of years later, they found out that he has autism. He is the most incredible artist you have ever seen. His voice is beautiful. He can play almost any instrument, just get him in contact with it, but he can't sit on this panel and have a conversation with you. When he won AGT, by now, it probably has a, over 100 million views right. on YouTube. Yeah. So the people that weren't able to experience that live, which you just would have been bawling, because when he won, not only brought the house down on AGT, but, but created a, a viral storm or a story that said, this young man is not disabled. He's very abled. Mm-hmm. He's just not in the way that we're used to seeing it. So that's the power when you think of technology for good that really helps it. And another thing, yes. Yes. Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Yes. When Brooklyn Nine-Nine, <laughs> yes, right? Lots of fans. When Brooklyn Nine-Nine came home to NBC, yes, NBC Universal, Universal 
produces the show, but it was on Fox. And Fox decided that it might be a good opportunity, or NBC decided it would be a great opportunity for it to come home to NBC. It was actually social media that fueled that decision making right. because there was such an uproar that, oh my gosh, I cannot live without my Brooklyn Nine-Nine. You got to keep this thing alive. And that's when we were able to bring it home to NBC. So those are the times when you say, wow, technology today where people are liberated, consumers have a voice, yeah. that's when it really works yeah. and it works for good. And, and do you think that would have been the case 10, 20 years ago, Terry? No way. Yeah. No way. You got to understand. The show would have been canceled and written off, You right? know what was wild is that it, as I was like, I, it was a foregone conclusion to me that we were coming back. And I was like, I was chilling out like, yeah, it's no big deal. And I was like, we got canceled. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> and I turned around and then the internet went nuts. And I mean, the, 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 the comments, the tweets, the, the Instagram posts, the posts, people were just going, wait, no, 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 this can't happen. And in t less than 28 hours, we were back at NBC at home. And you know, and this is another thing I want to say about what, what streaming is doing and the whole thing is the truth is, is that we will probably be, because of streaming, more popular in 15 years than we are right now. That's what is, because everybody, every new generation can binge watch and watch everything for years and years to come. And I think it's just, it's a magical thing. I think it's awesome. Well, we've got Peacock coming, speaking that's of. Right. So that's where you've got multiple platforms to continue the expansion and to continue taking over the world, Terry Crews, because that's what you're doing. To take care of my grandkids, take please. Care of your grandkids. <laughs> <laughs> no, because Marina del Sul, you'll see more on Peacock. You're going to see more of Brooklyn Nine-Nine. You're going to maybe even see behind the scenes all of the things that go into creating the show. Yes. How exciting is that opportunity? It's unbelievable. I mean, again, when you look at what streaming is, it's power. It gives you your power. And it's, it's kind of like when I can watch everything when I want to and turn it off and, and also turn it back on when I want. Again, I, when I grew up, I was at the mercy of the gatekeepers. Mm -hmm. I was, and now I feel free. It's actually freedom, but you have to be careful. It's funny because with freedom comes a lot of responsibility. Yes. And you have to make sure you're not binging for like, you know, two weeks straight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I would be I doing, I would do that. I, I just told on myself. I was I was like, like, oh. It was the holidays, right? So it was okay. Um, but how then, I mean, speaking to that, the responsibility, how then as content creators, producers, as talent, do we need to step up to meet the demands of the future, Linda? Well, I, I think it actually goes back to who are we serving? Mm -hmm. And I think we have to be really clear and stay clear to what our purpose is. And we're actually serving our audience, audiences who crave this premium content. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to serve them junk. And when you see this panel that we have on here, you can tell that NBCU is pretty aware of who we want to serve. And we want to serve them with the premium content that is going to add to the next 100 years of NBCU. So I think that's part of what's powering our leadership in the marketplace. And also that we have to meet them on their terms, which to your point is anywhere, anytime, on any screen. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think makes you know, what's happening in 2020 with over that 110,000 110, hours of content or what we're on the doorstep of, whether it's Peacock launching in April, whether it's the Tokyo Olympics, which is right yeah. around the corner, or whether it's the election of all of our lifetimes. So those are the things that we're excited about and staying focused on. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, it's all about quality, not quantity. I mean, yes, we have multiple ways of putting our stories out there. But as you said, it's not junk. It's making and, and sure that it's it. something that is reaching an audience. Yeah, for, for I think the perfect example uh, for a company which shocks a lot of people when I talk about it is actually a 45-year-old example. And this is the 45th season 
of Saturday Night Live. Mm, so think about the power of that brand that still has this major chokehold on the cultural zeitgeist of this country that we really all every week can't live without. Or we wake up and we have to see the, the opening monologue. But unless you're very aware of who you're serving and what's important to them or what keeps you relevant, mm -hmm. you're not going to be around for that 45 years. And you can watch SNL Live. You can watch it on your phone the next morning in clips or in a variety of other ways, including YouTube. And we're aware of that because the consumer makes that decision. So we make it available to them. What I love that, you know, and Terry alluded to this, is that the, the power of streaming is, you know, it's going to be like the friend syndrome, you know, 10 years from now, 20 years from now. My kids are watching Friends now. When I, you know, I'm like, wait a minute, I didn't have kids when I was watching this show. <laughs> it speaks to the power of how we can, in SNL, I was showing my kids the Christopher Walken cowbell sketch, sketch, sketch the other day, and they were dying laughing, because some things just hold up. And that's the key, it's holding up. But also, we, we would be remiss if we didn't talk about representation. And I think that is the most important thing in our industry right now is making sure that all these diverse voices that we have on the stage are representative of the people that we serve, right? Yeah, and I think if you just take a snapshot of this stage today, it's a perfect example. But when you talk about, you know, kind of reminding us who we serve and the importance of storytelling. If we get to work with people like Dan Fogelman, who brings us stories and they bring us stories first, that to be able to tell that, that can underscore that focus on the diversity or the commonality that we all have, right? Yeah. It could be our family dynamics. It could be the universal love of music and the importance of those crossing those cultural you know, boundaries that kind of bind us and bring us all together. It's just what we have to do. Yeah. Well, even talking about, I mean, I was thinking about the future of news. And obviously, as you alluded to, a huge year with 2020 and the election of, as you mentioned, our lifetime. Um, I think what's, what's interesting is the same that you talk about the entertainment industry and the news, it's the same way. I don't think an anchor bot is ever going to replace, I can, at least I hope not, <laughs> going to replace the people no that you that. see in the morning or at night. Yeah. Sure, the, way, the times that you sit down and watch your newscasts or get your information, even you know, getting a couple of headlines on Twitter or wherever it is you digest your information from, that may change. But I think at the end of the day, when a big story is breaking, or when you want to know the election results right away, or when you need somebody to help you digest and break down, OK, what does that mean? How does this impact me? How does this relate to my life? And also, in terms of, you know, we, we talk about it's all in the palm of your hands. I do think that there are certain stories that I relate to more than others. So I would like the opportunity to say, OK, these are the kinds of news services I want to follow, yeah. or these are the, you know, the kinds of stories I like, and then have that directed towards me. So I think you will see a lot more of that, you know, a lot yeah, more think, sort of funneling the content in yeah, the direction you want it to be. I think it's also that consumers know, is particularly in times if we're talking about news, that they have to go to those trusted brands. And they know that those trusted yeah. brands are also yeah. bringing them other forms and pieces of content like right. we're talking about today in all the shows that you do. But then in those moments, they're going to say, my NBC is that go to to be that filter, to be that expert, to break it down and give it to me yeah. in those pieces that I understand. Yeah. And again, talking about the power that streaming that, you know, that now, especially talking about news, now you can really see if it's fake news or not because yes. you have you have the power to see and make your own because i remember when i grew up it was only what what, what happens in the tv and what they feed you with that's the truth no in your head you think oh, it's yeah. talking about news especially yeah. and coming from mexico imagine it's just terrible right. so that was the only thing that we had so whatever the television said that was the truth and now we have that power now we can go and say okay i like what uh, natalie says but maybe i don't agree with this so then i'm gonna go to cnn or nbc or whatever and then you make your own and and, and that power we didn't have before and, and i think it's yeah. really important there were time. only three channels before yeah <laughs> you know, know they right. all had the right. same stories on um so there's a real opportunity i think i mean even though there is somewhat, you know, we hear the word fragmentation in the marketplace and in the industry, 
but if it's directed in the right way, it really is for content creators, for music producers, for actors, songwriters, for you know all of the talent out there. I think this is a, a land of opportunity. Right? Yeah, uh, we're really excited about 2020 and beyond, and the availability of that choice via technology just makes it honestly quite a playground for all of us on this stage here at NBC. Excited about that playground. Yeah. 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 Me too. Um, how do you see, what do you see are some areas that are immediately changing versus things that will never change? Oh, goodness. I think to Mandy's point, she really said it all at the top, that'll never change, is that's the power of storytelling and yeah. that creativity cannot be replaced by AI or technology. Okay. Lord, fear the world or anyone who believes that can happen. Yeah. Uh, so I think that that's what will never change. I think always, you know, uh, innovation, technology, disruption, that's going to continue. It keeps all of us employed to figure out ways uh, to bring those stories to, to our audiences who are telling us how they want to get it every single day. So uh, that's what's kind of fueling us forward. And, you know, and I love to, like, we've seen so much the power of the viewer, what with Brooklyn Nine, but the power of social media. I know with This Is Us, I mean, every week it's like, oh my gosh, this happened on This Is Us. You can just, yeah. you know, it breaks it all down. And there's, or there's our there's, job now is it's to live social tweet media, along. Live tweet <laughs> to people the show. watching the show. Yeah, absolutely. Or you get a text that says, do not go on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> do not. No spoiler. I know you weren't able to watch This Is Us yet. Don't go on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but to have that direct connection, of course, we've all reiterated it a million yeah. times. It's just something that didn't exist when I was first starting out 20 years ago. It's yeah. so nice to, to have an audience grow with you right. and to feel like you can get that instant feedback back too. I, I really yeah. appreciate that. No, and, and sorry, man. Like yeah. I, I live in here in, well, in Los Angeles and my entire family is in Mexico. Only that, like for me to see my parents tweeting, um, doing like things that they didn't even, they, they, there were no TVs when they were growing up. So mm -hmm. it's a huge difference in this, the era that they have been going through. And now I can Skype with them, you know, I can, I can see their faces. And, and that brings us together because we're very close, so it's very hard for me to, you know, being apart, and they're old, so to see them and for them to see me, it's just stupid things that the technology is like, and they have to keep up, because they were like, if we don't keep up, then yeah. we're gonna lose you. Yeah. And yeah. I think so, with technology, I remember me and my family was on a group chat, and my mom just recently started sending these memes and gifts, and we're like, <laughs> where is she getting this from? <laughs> with her busted phone. Like, you know, but it's like, you know, it, technology used to be the gap between the, you know, the before and the young, like, you know, so it used to be a gap, but now technology has everybody in front of each other. It's like, oh, yeah. you don't have the new iPhone? I have the new iPhone. Grandpa got the iPhone before you because he got the money. So, you know, <laughs> it starts, and then all of a sudden you go into Apple and they teach you how to use the phone. And you go, that's what I love. Like, technology is not just happening. They're, they're teaching you at the same time how to use it. They say, don't yeah. worry, I know this looks scary, this is a new thing for you, but I'll teach you how to use it. So now you see a child learning how to use the same technology as a, the grandpa who just bought it for them, and now they're on the same wave, yeah. you know? So now you can grow together using the old knowledge and the new imagination, you know? Yeah. So it's just a beautiful uh, harmony between the two. And you wonder what's next. I, I mean, know, right? <laughs> Jetsons, For all of here us, we it's going to make our lives a little easier, yeah. but also maybe a little more challenging. So that's that's the key. Linda, some closing words because uh, I know everybody here. They've been sitting patiently. So what well, what are your thoughts? Twenty twenty, of course, a huge year. For, for NBCU, but but beyond. Well, beyond, I would hope that we would share stages in the future because you can imagine the caliber of talent on the stage makes my job a lot easier every day. So I thank you all. I thank you all for being here. Um, but for us, I think the technology and innovation is just driving us to be more motivated to bring more great stories on any screen at any time or whatever is conjured up in the future at CES a couple years from now. So 2020 is going to be a great year in addition to the Olympics and the election, the launch of Peacock. I think the future is very bright for our company.
more ways to connect with you, our viewers. So thank you all so much for being here. Thank you for lending us your ear. And hopefully you are streaming and watching and viewing us on multiple platforms at all times of the day. <laughs> Have a thank good you. day. <laughs> Plastic bag